Hi there, my name is Catherine. I hope you're doing well. Today's video is my August reading wrap up and I'm quite excited because I use Storygraph to track my reading and they've just introduced this really cool update where they provide like an infographic kind of like a Spotify wrapped and they do this like yearly but they've introduced doing it monthly now. I think maybe I'm gonna start looking at that first in my wrap up videos, getting an overview from that about how the reading month was before then going a bit more in depth about each of the books that I read. So let's have a look. I've not fully looked at it yet. I did not read as much as I would have liked this month. I only read five books which is still good like I'm still happy with that but oh there's Sienna she's come to say hello. I swear to god she acts like a cat <laughs> the way she gets herself up on the back of this. I still would have liked to have read more though but life has gotten a bit busy the past month past couple of months really and also me and Alex got the Xbox game pass and so we've just been playing a lot of games instead of reading together which is what we usually do. The amount of pages I read was 1924. I read quite a lot of short shorter books so I think in the future my pages will probably be a bit higher than that and my average rating was 3.4 so it was pretty I think it, it was an average month really I didn't have a five star my highest reads I had three four star reads my average book length was 299 pages and my average time to finish was eight days which considering the length of the books I was reading isn't great for me really. I read 100% fiction, unsurprising. I read two literary, two romance, one contemporary, one horror and one mystery. I read the majority print, 60% print, 40% digital and oh my gosh, yeah okay, it shows you a little graph of how many pages I read each day. I do try and update my story graph every day to keep my streak going but Oh my god, when you lose a day, even if you've read that day, you can't get it back. I think you can update it like up to a day pass, but if you don't do it by then, you lose your streak. So I had a <laughs> I had a, a stagnant period in the middle there where I didn't read any pages. Anyway, okay, yeah. So because I only read five books in August, this video is going to be a little bit shorter than my usual wrap up videos. The first book I read was Murder Road by Simone St. James, which I only rated two stars, which isn't very good for me. This is a paranormal thriller slash horror and it follows a young couple, a man and a woman who have just gotten married. They're taking a really short wee honeymoon together in 1995. This book begins with them in the car driving to their destination when they realise they've taken a wrong turn and they've ended up on this really long stretch of road where they've not seen anyone pass them for ages. The vibes there are just altogether a bit weird. That is until they spot a hitchhiker on the road and when they let her into the car they realise she is bleeding, she's been injured and another car starts chasing them down. The hitchhiker ends up dying and they end up becoming suspects in the death of this hitchhiker. They soon find out that this isn't the first girl to be murdered or be found dead or have just disappeared on this one stretch of road. So April and Eddie, because they're suspects and they want to prove that they're innocent, decide that they're going to find out what has been happening there for all these years. This has been going on for decades. Both of them have trauma in their past that they are coming to terms with. April did didn't have a very safe upbringing and had to learn how to fend for herself and Eddie is suffering from PTSD from being in the army. On the surface I feel like this book sounded like it was going to be really really good. I didn't go in expecting the paranormal element and I think that threw me a bit. I enjoy paranormal elements in my stories when I know they're going to be there and sometimes if it's done right it can be fun not knowing they're coming but the way that it was done in this book just felt a bit too much like this was a thriller mystery book and the paranormal element was just thrown into it. It didn't feel like it was really rooted in the story in a way that it fit with everything else in my opinion. I found the writing should have been easy to read for me and fast paced but instead I found it such a slog to get through like I didn't find myself wanting to pick up the book at all. I didn't find myself eager to discover what the mystery was. I couldn't even tell you what it was now like I can't even remember. It has just so not stuck with me. There is an edition of it that my sister-in-law has that I think is stunning. I love the cover of it so much. I love the style of it. The art style kind of sells 
the book like it's gonna be a kind of retro campy fun thriller horror mystery and I can see that that's what the author was trying to go for but I don't think that that was achieved for me unfortunately. I honestly think this book put me in a rut that just like lasted the whole month and that's why I had myself turning to video games instead. Next I read The Trees by Percival Everett which I gave four stars. I've read one other Percival Everett book before, Wounded, which I loved. It's one of my favourite books that I had to read in uni. I've wanted to read more Percival Everett for so long and I finally have and I'm so happy I did. I've already got another book on my shelf by him that I'm excited to get into. He's one of these authors that I think I would love to just slowly work through all of his work so far and kind of build up his collection slowly because I just love his writing style so much. This book is set in a small town in Mississippi called Money. This town has some very dated opinions to put it mildly. It's full of racist people basically. The events of the book are kicked off when the body of a dead white man is found alongside another body of a dead black man who seems to resemble a man called Emmett Till who was lynched 65 years prior. The local sheriff and the police department initially suspect that they got in a fight or whatever but when the body of the black man goes missing and then turns up next to another white man who has been murdered. A pair of detectives from the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation are called in to investigate further. These two men are met with resistance from the town. They're black men so they are fighting against like the racist views of the town of the sheriff department whilst trying to investigate what on earth is going on in this town, why this body keeps going missing, what is the connection to Emmett Till. So they have to go into like a deep dive into the history of the town and the history of lynchings in the town. And I think it's fair to say where this book starts and where it ends up is quite crazy in a really really good way. The subject matters and topics in this book are very important and very harrowing at times. There's a section within I think about halfway through in the book where one of the characters is looking through the history of lynchings within this one town and all of the people in the town who have been murdered just because of the colour of their skin and within the book Everett literally lists every single name so it's just like page after page after page of just name 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 and compared to the the rest of the tone with of the book which is surprisingly quite light and funny at times despite the fact that like it's so dark the contrast in that tone with this one section in the middle of the book with this listing all the names of the people who have been lynched is so so effective the two main characters in the book the detectives who i can't remember the names of of. They're really really funny. They play off the other characters in the town so so well. Their banter is amazing. Their kind of joking at the expense of these really ignorant people is really really well done. I can't really go into where this book goes because I really do think you have to read it. I read it at a really interesting time as well. The book explores like mob mentality a lot and while I was reading it we had a lot of riots going on in the UK. It was published in 2021 I'm pretty sure that it was written in response to the murder of George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement that came after that and that is all I really want to say about the book because if I go into more detail I feel like I'm just going to start spoiling things that, that happened. The only other thing I will say is that there are real life political figures that appear in this book and have quite big moments in this book and the way that Everett has written said political figure, one in particular, I let you figure out who you think that may be in America is really really spot on in a hilarious way and also a very unsettling way. I really love this book and I can't wait to read more Percival Everett. The next book I read was This Is How You Lose the Time War by Max Gladstone and Amal El Motar, which I also gave four stars. This is kind of more of a novella, I would say. It's only 198 pages. The book is mainly told through a series of letters between two characters with little chapters in between each letter, placing the characters in a certain time and place. This book is sci-fi, romance, LGBTQIA+. The book takes place in the midst of a time 
war and our two main characters are agents within this time war on opposite sides of the war. One of them is more cyborg-y and futuristic and the other one seems to be more rooted in nature and f the way they're described feels more magical. They're very much like a part of the ecosystem if you get what I mean. They're called red and blue but for the life of me I can't remember which one's red and which one's blue. I think I think red is the cyborg and blue is the more naturey person and the book is essentially them as enemies exchanging letters with each other. It starts off as kind of this ploy to one-up each other and trick the other but these letters soon start to evolve into a deeper connection, a friendship and eventually a love between these two people. They have to keep this connection secret because obviously they're on opposing sides of the war and if their commanders found out about these, this connection they would know that they have been compromised and they would be, I assume, killed. <laughs> this was a really, really stunning, stunning story. I loved the pacing of this book. I loved the narrative choice of how the story was told. So basically each chapter consists of either red or blue finding the letter and then the letter itself and then the next chapter will be the other one finding the next letter and then the letter itself and it goes on and on like that. It sounds simple but it was such an effective way to tell the story. I loved the characterization of both of these characters. They were both very distinct. At the beginning it was quite hard to ground myself in the world. The language used is quite complex in my opinion so you have to kind of commit let yourself just go along with the ride and not get so caught up in the kind of sciencey side of things I guess. Once you do that the two characters start to become a lot clearer and def more defined from each other and as they gain a deeper connection to each other you as the reader also gain a deeper understanding of their differences in culture, their differences in views and upbringing and experiences. I think it's probably one of the most romantic stories I've ever read uh, with a very satisfying conclusion. I really did think this was going to be a five star read for me and the only reason it wasn't a five star is because as much as I did love the language at times there were points throughout where I thought the complexity of the language was more of a hindrance than it needed to be but I did really, really love this book. Next up I read Business Casual by B.K. Borison, which is the fourth book in the Love Light Farm series. This is a romance and it follows Nova Porter who is in the midst of setting up her new tattoo shop in this town that she grew up in and loves and Charlie Milford who is a investment banker it says? You don't really, that doesn't really matter. He's just like a big shot business guy who lives in New York but spends a lot of time in the town because his sister lives there and he loves it there but he doesn't really feel like he belongs there or at New York. There is an undeniable attraction between these two characters. Nova stressed with the tattoo studio. She decides that she wants one night of fun with Charlie and then they can put this attraction to the side and move on and still be friends and he agrees but of course they have that one night together and the attraction is still there and in fact it's only growing. That is pretty much all I can remember from this book actually. I did give this four stars because I did really really enjoy reading it at the time but I can't remember the plot that much but I did really have a good time. I really liked Nova and Charlie. I think the conflict of the book was believable without being frustrating. They might actually be my favourite couple in this series, possibly. I did really like mixed signals though. I'm, tr I'm trying to say something more about this book. I did rate it quite highly but I honestly, all I can say is it's fun. I can't remember. <laughs> Oops, I don't know what I was doing this month in terms of reading. The last book I'm going to talk about, I'm moving swiftly on from that. If you like romance, you'll like that book. That's all I'm going to say. But moving swiftly on, the last book I read in August was Delicate Dream Department Store, which is the first in a, I think right now it's a duology. There's a second book out, or it's coming out anyway. I will not be reading the second book. I gave this book three stars because I enjoyed the concept of it. I did find it very readable, but I don't know if it was because the, it, it was a bad translation but there was something about the voice in this book that 
was very grating to me in the sense that it was very tell not show and it was very at times simplistic and I, that's not to say it's simplistic writing is bad. I much prefer when a book says what it means straightforward than like flowers it up, you know what I mean? But this one was simplistic to an extreme, you know? This book takes place in the land of dreams and it's basically the concept of when we all go to sleep, we all go into this place and we can go and buy dreams depending on what we want in our sleep and we don't remember that place when we wake up, we just kind of remember that we had this dream. And it follows our main character, called Penny who is a new hire at the Dallagert department dream store which is her dream job and it just shows her learning the ropes there as well as showing different people in real life and how their dreams help them overcome issues, conflicts. There's one wee chapter in the middle that focuses on a dog's dream about his owners coming back home and then they do come home and they take him out on a walk. That bit nearly made me cry. So I did give this three stars because I actually did enjoy this book. It very much gave me the vibe of Enid Blyton's The Faraway Tree, but like a more adult version. I could really see that the author thinks about dreams a lot, what they all mean and and why we dream. And I think it is a very creative book, but the, the translation of it just really seemed lacklustre to me. And I just wonder if maybe it is a good translation and it, translation it is the way that that is written and it's just a style that I don't vibe with or maybe it's a bad translation but I just don't I don't want to believe that because at the back of the book there's a note from the translator as well saying how much they adore this book and they talk about why they decided to translate it in certain ways like the tenses they used and stuff so like they clearly put a lot of thought into it. I don't know maybe I would read the second book. There were highs and there were lows definitely. I would recommend it to certain people in certain situations I guess but yeah a strange one, a strange way to end the month. I think I did enjoy it. I just had severe issues with it as well. <laughs> okay I actually talked for longer than I meant to there. I think it's because I was confused about my feelings on a lot of these books and a lot of my reading this month in general. Please let me know what you were reading in August, what you were up to, and I hope you had an amazing month. I, for one, am glad that summer is nearly over. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing upcoming week and I will see you in the next one. Bye!